Number two, Virginia men's basketball lost to number five, Houston. 69-61. Houston had 30 points in the first half. Well, Virginia had 26. Second half, Houston had 39. Virginia had 35. It doesn't help that you lost both halves. I mean, by the same amount of points. You got to score more than Houston in the second half to win. Of course, there's more than just scoring. You got to play defense better. You got to play good defense. Virginia shot 41.7% from the field, 24-48 overall, 6 for 22 on threes. That definitely needs to go up in terms of percentage. 15 for 17 on free throws. I can't fault them in that department. I really, really can't. 26 rebounds, 6 of those offensive. 15 assists. You could see that number go up higher. Two steals in the game, which is not a lot. Three blocks. That's good. Ten turnovers. You didn't turn the ball that much. Thirteen fouls, but nine bench points. And like I said, Reese Beekman is trying to play through a hamstring issue. It didn't help that Ben Vanderplas for Virginia was scoreless in the game. 0 for 7. I mean, in three double-digit scores overall. So, now, for Houston side of things. They only have five bench points. So, Virginia won that department. But, Houston shot the ball better as a team. 25 for 51. 49%. 8 for 21 on threes. Yeah, that doesn't make a difference. 11 for 13 on free throws, which is 84.6%. And the three-point percentage for Houston was 38.1. So, just in case I didn't say that already. 30 rebounds in the game. 7 of those offensive. 17 assists. 4 steals, which is more than Virginia. 3 blocks, which is the same as amount as out as Virginia. Eight turnovers. Both teams took care of the ball pretty good in this game, but Houston did better. 17 fouls. They committed more fouls in Virginia. But when you shoot the ball better than the opponent, it's pretty hard to lose. And you're out rebounding them too and everything. So what do these two teams have going forward? Virginia side of things, they have number 25, Miami, Florida on the road. That is going to be a tough matchup potentially because it's not, it's on the road, first of all, and it's against a, a ranked team, which, of course, rankings could change. They play 4 and 8, Albany. They should win that game in theory. They have to go on the road to Georgia Tech. That's 7 4. That might not be an easy, it's a road game, so you never know. You got 8 4 Pitt on the road. You never know about that. And that's five games, right? And SM4 is Syracuse, which that's just the name five games right there. I like to say four or five games in advance. Not, nothing more, nothing less. Now, Houston side of things. This was much needed for them in the win because they don't have many quality opponents. I mean, that are good teams. Like Memphis, for example, is probably the best, second best team in, the, in America. I know some other teams are better, like UCF is in three, but that's besides the point. Houston has McNeese State. They should win that game right there. They had to go on the road to Tulsa. It's on the road, which is dangerous, but they should beat Tulsa. Eight and three UCF. They should win that game, but you never know. UCF is eight and three right now. You got a three and seven SMU team at home. You better not lose to them. You better not. Then you got on the road against the game for Cincinnati. So that's just naming games for both teams within the next five here. Yeah, because really, there's not a lot of quality teams in the American. Nobody else is ranked. So, needless, unless they come out with rankings and some teams are in the rankings. We'll have to wait and see. Anyways, if you like this content, hit the like and subscribe button. 
I'll see you guys later. It's on the road to 500 subscribers now. Let's go.